Since our last video about iPhone system services was such a hit, we decided to take the list of iPhone system services and explain them all from top to bottom. Some are pretty cut and dried, but for a lot of them, when you look under the hood, a world of possibilities opens up. Possibilities for you to be tracked, your battery to be drained, or your data to be sold. Let's dive in. First, let's head to system services on my phone. I'll open settings and scroll down to privacy and security. Tap on that, then tap on location services at the top and aggressively scroll all the way to the bottom of this page. Then tap system services. And we'll start with a brand new system service in iOS 17.3 called alerts and shortcuts automations. Psst. If you haven't updated to iOS 17.3 yet, it's called location-based alerts. Alerts and shortcuts automations lets your iPhone use your location to remind you to call someone when you get to a specific place or when to leave for your next appointment. This one is fine for privacy, but it may or may not be great for battery life. Pro tip number one is that GPS is one of the biggest battery drainers on iPhone. The more often your phone uses it and the more precisely it hones in on exactly where you are, the faster your battery drains. This will be a theme throughout this video. So to save battery life, I'm gonna turn it off. Next up, Apple Pay Merchant Identification, which lets your iPhone use your current location to help provide more accurate merchant names when you use your physical Apple card. I don't even know where mine is. I've never used my physical Apple card. And there have been reports where Apple Pay incorrectly identifies the merchant based on location. So you buy a cup of coffee, next thing you know, your phone is saying you made a purchase at the sneaker shop next door. It's just a glitch, but it can cause some unnecessary anxiety. And we like to minimize anxiety. One way we do that is by offering free PDF guides to our channel members that walk you through every setting we talk about in this and many of our most popular videos. It's a great way to follow along at your own pace and it helps us out a lot. So in this case, I'm gonna turn off the switch next to Apple Pay Merchant Identification and next, Cell Network Search. Now, Cell Network Search might sound like it has something to do with your phone's ability to search for cell networks. I don't know why you'd think that though. Your iPhone uses GPS and Bluetooth along with crowdsourced Wi-Fi hotspot and cell phone towers to determine your phone's approximate location. And approximate often means within a few feet. So companies like Apple love to brag about how much they respect my privacy because they're not sharing my location or spying on my location using the GPS that's directly built into my phone. So if I was Apple, how would I deliver targeted ads based on a person's location? That is what the crowdsourced databases are for. So when it's time for you to see an ad, your phone sends data about which cellular networks, which Wi-Fi hotspots are in range of your phone to Apple. Apple checks its database to see where those towers are. Now Apple knows basically exactly where you are. Further proof that this has nothing to do with actually searching for cell networks is in Apple's support article about what to do if you don't have good cell phone service. If this had anything at all to do it, you think that they'd mention it when you're troubleshooting how to fix cell network searching problems, but it doesn't. Next up, compass calibration. The most important part of what this does is actually in Maps apps, where this gives you the ability to point your phone in a specific direction. It's especially useful in large cities. Maybe there's a lot of skyscrapers. You don't have a great GPS connection, so your phone can use its internal compass to point you in the right direction. If I live in a city, this is something I'm going to leave on. And even though I don't live in a big city right now, I leave it on too, just because I like the little arrow in the Maps apps. You'll see, we are not just turning everything off, people. You know, we'll tell you the truth. Next up, device management. Device management is a service that allows your employer or your school to manage your phone. If your school or IT department at work doesn't manage your phone, you can go ahead and turn this one right off. And the reason these are concerning is that any monitoring that goes on in the background of your phone using a device management profile is not always obvious because it's designed to be invisible. So it's a powerful tool in the right hands, dangerous tool in the wrong hands. Maybe we'll make a video about that. Whoa. Hit the subscribe button if you think we should. Emergency calls and SOS is next. When an emergency call is placed, in addition to the location already provided to emergency services, your iPhone or Apple Watch will make additional data available through what's called the Enhanced Emergency Data Service. This may include street address information if your current location is near your home or work address, 
and your contact card. But I'm not done yet. The second part of it is that it will automatically text your emergency contacts when the call is over. But you should also be aware that for safety reasons, your iPhone's location information may be used when an emergency call is placed to aid response efforts, regardless of whether or not you enable location services at all. So I like to leave this one on. If I'm having an emergency, let's give the emergency responders as much info as possible to help them out. I mean, am I right, people? Next up, find my iPhone. Gotta leave it on if you wanna use find my iPhone in the find my app. I'm leaving it on. I said some of them were cut and dry. Next up is HomeKit. HomeKit is Apple programming jargon for the tech that lets smart home products like lights and locks work with your Apple products like iPhone and HomePod. This switch controls whether or not HomeKit or the Apple Home app can use automations based on your location. For instance, you might want your iPhone to turn off the lights when you leave home. It's great in theory, but if you struggle at all with battery life. And during my time at the Apple store, I saw tons of issues with geofencing features just like this one. I'm gonna turn this one off. Next up is motion calibration and distance. And this is less about your actual iPhone than you might think. Motion calibration and distance lets your iPhone improve the accuracy of your distance, pace, and calorie calculations on your Apple Watch especially when GPS is unavailable. If you're not using your iPhone to work out, you can comfortably turn this switch rate off. If you do use your phone to work out, or especially if you do any of the Apple Watch fitnessy stuff, leave it turned on. I personally am gonna turn it off because every time we turn one of these switches off, we save a little bit of battery life. And who doesn't want more battery life for their phone? Next up is networking and wireless. This is the Wi-Fi version of cell network search. You'd think by the name, networking and wireless, that this would have anything to do at all with your phone's ability to network or be wireless, but it doesn't, surprise. This is about building Apple's crowdsourced database of Wi-Fi networks, which are devices that they can use to, you guessed it, track your location and show you targeted ads because your attention is worth money after all. There's this misconception that just because user data is anonymized, you're safe, but they're still sending data about your device, like unique identifiers and all this other stuff that's connected to the device itself. And you happen to own the device. So it isn't a big leap to get from anonymized to non-anonymized data. There are all these privacy safeguards built into our phones that really do protect us. But if somebody is determined enough or has the resources of a government, for instance, let's not delude ourselves into thinking that we're truly using our phones anonymously. Put on my tinfoil hat right now, I guess. So I'll turn off networking and wireless. It's gonna warn me, turn it off. Next up, satellite connection for those of you people with iPhone 14s and newer which allows your iPhone to use the emergency SOS via satellite feature. I leave it on. Next up is setting time zone. At first glance, it's a no brainer, adjusting your time zone based on your location. But in real life, it's a big battery drainer. Now I may have done a little traveling in my day, but I ain't no jet setter and I don't need my phone to constantly check in with cell towers to decide which time zone I'm in. Because as I said, it's a battery drainer, and I'm almost positive I won't be leaving this time zone today. When I do travel, I just come back in here and flip the switch on and off again to update the clock on my phone. And you're saving battery life in the meantime. It's like you pay for a month of HBO and you watch one show and then you don't use the subscription for a year, you know, and you're paying hundreds of dollars for HBO and eventually you get fed up and you cancel HBO. Next up, share my location, which lets you share your location through the messages app, for example. If you turn it off, you can't share your location with anyone. So it's up to you whether or not you want to leave this on or turn it off. But location sharing can be a big battery drainer. You have been warned. I do sometimes use it though, so I'll leave it on. Next we see sharing.framework, which is a developer setting. You may or may not see it. You can safely turn it off as long as you're not a developer. Next, suggestions and search, which lets your iPhone send its location to Apple to provide more relevant recommendations for you, like relevant search suggestions and news. If you don't turn this on, you'll save battery life and Apple will still use the IP address of your internet connection to determine where you are. So I can safely turn this one right off. I'm still gonna get local news, just 
Does it use the GPS and the phone? I say battery, win-win. But if you use a VPN and you like suggested news articles, for example, you might start to see some strange stuff because now Apple won't know exactly where your phone is. Next up is system customization. Now, system customization lets your iPhone customize system appearance, behaviors, and settings using your current location. Kind of vague, but what's an example? This can automatically enable optimized battery charging when you're at home. I am not anti-system customization because according to Apple, none of the customization data in here actually ever leaves your device. So we have a reason to have it on, which is the optimized battery charging thing, check, and it's secure, check, okay, Apple, we'll leave this switch on. And that's what I like. I like specific reasons and I like clarity with what's gonna happen with a switch. And next up, Wi-Fi call. Now, a lot of you might think that this Wi-Fi calling on off switch has something to do with turning Wi-Fi calling on or off on your iPhone. But like a lot of these settings, it doesn't. What does it actually do? This setting is about sending your location to your wireless carrier when you make short code calls, which usually provide access to public services because they won't work if the phone doesn't know where you are. So Apple sends the city to your carrier. According to Apple, if you do not want to share the city you are calling from with your carrier when making short code calls, you may turn off location services for Wi-Fi calling on your iOS or watchOS device by going to settings, privacy and security, location services, system services, and tapping to turn off the switch. And about those emergency services, emergency calls you make on your iPhone are routed through cellular service when that's available, not Wi-Fi calling. So I turn this one right off. Next, a setting that is significant. Now, can you guess which one it is? It's significant locations. Let's tap on that and I'll use Face ID to log in. How does this work? Well, your iPhone and other Apple devices keep track of places you've recently gone, as well as how often and when you visited them in order to learn places that are significant to you. This data is end-to-end -end encrypted and cannot be read by Apple. It's used to provide you with personalized services, such as predictive traffic routing and to build better memories in photos. But your iPhone has to use GPS to find out where you are before it can encrypt and save this data, and that is a battery drainer. So if you wanna get the most out of your battery, this is one feature I recommend turning off. And then turning off and then tap back. Next, we're into the product improvement section of this video. We'll start with iPhone analytics. iPhone analytics lets your iPhone include your location and analytics data you may or may not be sending to Apple or to app developers. I'll drop a link to the video about other settings you should turn off on your phone in the card above in the description section below where we talk about how to turn those settings off too. But in other words, this doesn't turn off the collection of or sending of all your analytics. It just turns off the location piece of it. And this setting is far too vague for my liking. Apple defines iPhone analytics as data about how you use your devices and applications. So basically it's whatever they want it to be. Apple says none of this information is used to identify you personally, but it's more GPS usage and therefore more battery Drainage. Next up, routing and traffic. This service tracks your speed and location to provide traffic information in Apple Maps. It also allows your iPhone to periodically send barometric pressure information to Apple for their crowdsourced road traffic and atmospheric correction databases. What the heck is an atmospheric database for? Huh? Oh, what the heck is an atmospheric correction database for? I don't know. My barometer on this one says to turn it off. Next, improve maps. If you turn on this switch, Apple will collect the GPS coordinates obtained through significant locations and correlate them, okay, with street addresses associated with your Apple ID. So basically we're helping Apple to find out exactly where your house is, which as you can imagine, especially in the wide open spaces of middle America, may have very little to do with your actual street address. It also lets your iPhone periodically send location of where and when you launched apps, including the name of the apps. I'm turning this one right off. And not to be forgotten, last but not least, status bar icon. Regardless of whether you have status bar icon on or off, you will always see the little compass icon in the top bar when an app uses your location. This switch turns on that same little icon for all of these system services too. If I were more of a cynic, 
I might say this switch is off by default because Apple doesn't want you to know just how often your location is being used. And I think it's less about privacy and more about cutting down on their support costs because nobody likes to see that their location is being tracked when they don't think they need to have it be tracked or their phone isn't doing anything. I recommend turning this switch on and face the truth about just how often your phone is tracking your location and draining your battery. You see it just appeared for me right there. Why is that? Well, compass calibration is purple right now. It's because I opened the Maps app and it wanted to know which direction to point. Remember I said that's what it did? Oh, well, there you go. Next, watch this video about iPhone settings to turn off to get the best battery life possible because we do talk about all those other analytics tracking features on your phone and a whole lot more. We will see you there.